The copper industry put Swansea on the map and made it the centre of the industrial world. Vast fortunes were won and a new city was built on the back of it. The furnace is burnt out long ago, but now it's hoped these derelict works could be just as important to Swansea's future as they were to its past. Thanks to AHRC funded community research and a new regeneration project. The idea came from academics, but it's been enthusiastically adopted by local people who came together at the Connected Communities Festival to celebrate their achievements so far, as well as working out the next steps. This is a celebratory event of the past and current achievements um, of our community projects. We want to consolidate those projects and explore how we can increase their impact. Really, what we want is input from as many different um, communities and stakeholders as possible to ensure that what happens on this site is relevant and important to the people who live and work uh, in this particular area. Kate Spiller is coordinating the community research at Swansea University. Local people are probably the most passionate in Swansea I've ever come across. I've worked across South Wales in community history and community heritage and archaeology and people from Swansea particularly are in love with their heritage and in love with their communities and they want to shout about it. And that's why we're here today. We're here as academics, as researchers, as heritage professionals, as community members to come together to inform the future of the Harvard Mobile Copper Works and to keep community research in Swansea alive and kicking. The Connected Communities Project has trained many people. It has involved huge numbers of volunteers in, in different projects and it has engaged school children and university students in a number of different ways. Um, so it's had, a, had a, a big impact on a lot of lives. Since 1980, when the last works closed down, the remains of the copper industry have gradually been dismantled or reclaimed. The Havard Morpha site is the best relic we've got of an industry that once filled the entire Swansea Valley. It was the largest such building in the world at the time. Huge fortunes. Um, the Swansea at one point was producing 90% 90, 90 of the world's copper and um, there was a lot of money to be made. It was a very heavy industry, a very dangerous and difficult job. I'm afraid they didn't live very long because of the pollutions and chemicals that they were using all the time and the, um, the nature of the work, uh, hot and dusty and dirty. It was the stories of the people who worked here that sparked the imagination of the many community researchers involved in our Connected Communities programme. My great-grandfather on one side was a ship's carpenter on the copper barks uh, going around the Cape Horn and so uh, I found out a lot about his voyages and um, things like that which I had no knowledge about. On the other side my great-grandfather was working in the metalworks and he ended up with lead poisoning, all the ramifications that that had on the family. I was totally fascinated by that because so much of this I was born and brought up in Swansea and I didn't know about. The story of the ferry families that used to row workers across the River Towie to the White Rock Works also caught the imagination of local people. Um, what they wanted to do was identify the, the families who ran the ferry, um, to research them, to find something out about them, and if possible, find some descendants of them, uh, and even to find people who actually had a ride in the White Rock Ferry. Uh, so they did this, and they identified the three families over all that time over nearly 150 years, just three families around the ferry. Um, and I, we found not only descendants of the ferryman, but actually the last White Rock ferryman himself. Members of Clansamlet Historical Society have also been busy collecting and sharing stories of the past. 
Anyone, but especially the people of Flansambit, deserve to have this stuff available to them. What's the point of it being in a cupboard? And sharing is the main aim of the whole project. White Mark, yeah. the canal tunnel. It's very important that the community understands what its history is. Uh, it gives them a sense of identity, uh, a sense of um, belonging to a community, if you like. It's, it's very, very important. So yes, uh, it's, it's not just for historians. Historians may guide it. Uh, they may form the structure, but it's the people that put the meat on that structure, I think, yes, on the skeleton. Volunteer Brian Perrins has been doing just that for 25 years by guiding people on walks around the heritage sites. Uh, it goes back to when my children were in school, in a local school, and they were, they were doing study of the, the copper industry. So I got involved in that and um, started off taking walks, but we took school parties around. But it was on the other side of the river, the White Rock Works. This side was desolate. There was a piece in the paper that Professor Bowie was holding this lecture down in there about what they wanted to do in this site. So down I went. And it was like wonderful. Oh yeah, you get the point. You're kind of you're walking around, you're experiencing the site. Meanwhile, PhD students at Swansea University have been working on new ways of bringing the research to life. So you walk around the site, you have your mobile phone, and you're listening through headphones, or you're looking at your screen, and those are kind of really private, solitary experiences. So what we've tried to do is break outside of the screen and then implant the, the kind of the experience in the environment. It's 1841. So they, they hear these sounds, they see these projections and they really feel like the place has come to life and that it's kind of as they remember it when they used to work here or as they remember it as a child in the community. I think that's what's been great about today is the fact that other people have latched on and gave us new ideas as well. So the idea of maybe adding like triggered heat or triggered smells and further augmenting and enhancing the experiences that the visitors will have here uh, through technology. A lot has already been done to reclaim the physical remains of the Havard Morva site. Now there are exciting plans for the development of the copper works. Architects have drawn up mixed-use plans for the site that will include a living history laboratory, a digital innovation centre and housing. It will be a place where people can learn, work, live and play. See, this site in the past was all about people. Uh, and in the future, it, it, it also needs to be all about people. Uh, the way to, to bring this site to life is to reconnect people with the site. Is this the railways here? No. No. Yes. The Community researchers have also been coming up with new ideas based on their research on how to take the project forward. You can be sure that whatever happens, local people will be involved every step of the way. The passion from the local people is incredible. They love their local community, they feel attached to the history particularly and the heritage, and they want to create a legacy that's based around their community history. There's such an atmosphere. When you walk around here and you see the silhouette of those chimneys, it just does something to you. It's a magical sight and, and we, we owe it to interpret it in a way that people can understand it and get to know and love it, and that tells the story of our past, our ancestors, which is still relevant, you know, today.